One of the easiest ways of making more power in any car is to simply swap in an engine that makes more power. And the Nissan S15 chassis is no stranger to all manner of engine swaps from LS's through to RB26's, RB30's and 2JZ's. However, I don't think I've ever seen anyone swap a YB Cosworth 2 litre 4 cylinder into an S15. We're here with Fred from Team Caram Racing to find out a little bit more about this combination. So, Fred, with all of the options available in terms of ready, available, proven options for engines, why the YB Cosworth? Mate, um, going back to the days of the Sierra, um, the boys that actually own the car have always been a Cosworth fan and uh, and all, have always, always, ever, ever spoken about how they put 60 pounds in these things um, around Bathurst, around the old track over here. So 60 pounds was always a, a point where we had to get to as a minimum. So uh, Fauzi, the owner of the car, always said that let's let's, let's put a Cosworth, a YB, a YB. Mate, these things, we pump 60 into them, 100%, hold together all day long. And this is the result. So I think it's, it's worth mentioning that yeah, back in the Australian Tour, Touring Car Championship days when the Sierra RS500 was was sort of king at the time, uh, particularly for qualifying, the, the, the boost that they were running was insane. So the reliability of the engine has been well proven, but uh, the sort of power levels for circuit racing versus what you need for drag racing to be competitive, often two very different things. So for a start, the cars run at, at quickest pass of an 8.0, I understand? Zero at about 173. And uh, what sort of power is it actually producing to, to run those times? That, on that particular pass it had uh, 47 pounds of boost in it and it was showing um, close to a thousand. And that's at the engine or the rear wheels? The wheels. At the wheels. So I believe um, once we get to the target of 60, um, around the 1200 horsepower we should be able to run a consistent 770, 750, you know what I mean, 180, 182 mile, give or take. It makes for a fairly fast S15 no matter what the engine is that's powering it. I want to get into that uh, YB Cosworth engine a little bit. Again, on this side of the world particularly, we don't see very many of them being heavily modified. What's involved with building a 1200 horsepower capable YB Cosworth? Yeah. Mate, you got to, like any engine build, whether it be an RB, a 2J, uh, anything, um, a 4G, um, the basics, the half inch main studs, the head stud set up, the firing gasket set up, um, and then you know, the concrete of the block, um, and then all the, the rotating assembly involved as well. When you start talking different types of rods versus pistons versus stroke, it just comes together like any other combination. There's no secrets in these engines, man, but they are robust, they are built like a little diesel. There's a, there's a few things you mentioned there I just want to sort of head back and, and unpack. So you mentioned the, the half inch main studs and larger head studs. So uh, the main studs of course holding the crankshaft into the engine block, the head studs uh, are supporting the, the cylinder head holding the head on the block. So uh, what what do you need to do in order to fit larger head studs and main studs? How much of, how much of a, a big deal is that? Um, with the main studs on the YB, not a big deal, straightforward. Um, and whether you choose to run a steel cap, again, no big deal. The trickier part in these is the style of head stud that they run. They run a, a long stud. So it goes through the deck, but then it anchors into the bottom of the water jacket, just above the main studs as they meet. Um, so it's just the tricky part getting those that style of head stud set up done, because you can only do six from the ten. Only now we're starting to do 10 from the 10 long stud and hopefully that'll give us you know, the longevity that we need. There the can be some advantages with that technique and of course that comes from the, the OE block, it's, it's not a modification but a lot of the uh, studs we see for the heads they tie into the top of the block and uh, that actually causes distortion of the bores when you tie it in the head down so running them so far down into the block it, it avoids that? 100%. Now the uh, YB Cosworth block itself, you've got the advantage that you are starting with a cast iron block so there's some inherent advantages over what we see now most late model blocks are alloy, uh, fine for a road car application but when we start really running high cylinder pressures they can be problematic but uh, just before we started this interview talking off camera there are a couple of different YB blocks so you talk us about, talk us through the differences? You do, you find a 205 block which is a, a two wheel drive block only, um, then you get a 200 block which is a four-wheel drive block and then you also can get 
um, a two and a four wheel drive cylinder head. Um, and, and they all have their pros and cons, but we do like to use the four wheel drive stuff. And the four wheel drive block in particular, I understand, has uh, a little bit more material in it, thick, thicker sleeve. It uh, so it's about four and a half to five kilos heavier over a two litre block. Uh, it shows the extra material that's gone into into the block there. And obviously, you need everything in your favour if you want to be reliably making these, this sort of power level. Now, you, you also mentioned the fire ring setup. So the head gasket sealing with any high boost turbocharged engine is really key making sure that head stays sealed properly to the block. So can you sort of elaborate on what you mean by firing? What does that actually involve? Yeah, it's just the normal, again, what we're doing these these days. Again, copper head gasket uh, with the receiver groove at the top of the ball with the, um, the brass alloy ring. So it's the, the, the sealing ring that actually steps into the top of the, the bore and then seals straight onto the head? Correct. That's all. I mean, there's no, no real... Uh, other set up than that. I mean, that's what we find works. Yeah, I, I think it's fair to say that over the last five or maybe eight years in the import drag racing, that's the way that everyone's gone and, and, it, and it works. That's that's the way we find works best across the board again. Across a lot of these platforms that we've been setting up, it sem seems to be the way to go. Uh, in terms of turbocharger, what are you running on it and uh, is this the turbo that you will continue to run or do you need to step up a size? Um, no, look, right now it's got a 76-75 precision on it um, and at, at 45, 48 pounds, I, I don't think it's out of puff just yet. Um, we will we will put the extra 10 or 12 or 15, keep an eye on the exhaust uh, back pressure and if we find that we're in the right sort of like area, we haven't fallen off that island yet, will stay and if not we'll go up to an 80 series or whatever else the car needs. Now you just mentioned back pressure there and this is something that I think is probably more often monitored in drag racing applications and you're talking about the relationship and monitoring the relationship between boost pressure in the inlet manifold and exhaust pressure pre-turbocharger and uh, this is sort of a bit of a balancing act because the more back pressure we have often there's more energy available to drive the turbo but of course that also results in less power so kind of for a drag application where do you like to see the relationship between inlet manifold pressure and exhaust pressure? Oh, I mean, you, you need to be one to one, one, one point two to one. Well, any more than that, you're starting to choke yourself. You know what I mean? And, and to put some perspective around that, it's quite common if we're looking at a factory turbocharged car to see the exhaust pressure as much as double or even higher than boost pressure. Okay. Looking at the, the drivetrain in it, you're running a, an auto transmission, which again, pretty pretty common here, but can you talk us through a little bit more about what's involved there? Yeah, it runs a, um, a C4 transmission built by ours Race Glides here in Sydney, um, and he's done all the bits and pieces in regards to converter setup, a dump valve setup, and all that sort of business, so pretty much it's user friendly as for a driver, you just hop in there. Um, the one button does everything from trans brake to dump valve to uh, trigger nitrous once it sees enough throttle. It's pretty, it's pretty good car to drive, easy, straightforward. Uh, that, that is one of the advantages with the auto is there's a, not a lot of work to do, particularly between rounds, there's no clutches to adjust, etc. and much more forgiving uh, on the track. But uh, one of the problems is getting the, the car to come up on the converter, on the trans brake, uh, can be difficult, particularly with a small capacity turbo engine. So uh, you mentioned nitrous, can you talk us through how that's working? Yeah, so well, yeah, like you're saying, so the converter in it is a little bit on the sloppier side. Um, but then again, we do run a dump valve, so again, once you lock the trans brake, bring the car up into stage, you can either bump or, or bring the stall up and then it'll bring the nitrous in once it sees enough TPS. But by doing that, it'll um, open dump valves, slip the converter, bring the nitrous in. Once the RPM starts to pull over six and seven and eight thousand, it'll just naturally pull and make boost. So it sort of becomes self-fulfilling. Once the engine starts making boost, it creates more exhaust gas energy to spool the turbo. So it becomes sort of exponential and it comes up. Just talk us through, you've mentioned that dump valve for the converter a couple of times. So can you just give us a rundown on how that works? Again, all it is is pretty much starving the converter from transmission fluid. So just in, in actual fact, it's just like free revving in neutral. Once the button is, is go, um, it runs a fuel tech um, 
engine management system. It will initiate a launch. Once it knows that it's, it's, it is it is a proper, a valid launch, it will obviously shut valves, start turning things on, off, and the car will start. So the, the dump valve is used to basically uh, dump fluid out of the torque converter to allow it to come up onto the two-step and then it will refill? Correct. Instant, like instant. Yeah. Look, it's been great to get some insight into the car there. It's certainly unique uh, and still incredibly quick. We look forward to seeing how it goes this weekend, provided the weather plays ball. And uh, hopefully down the track we can see it well into the sevens. Thanks for your time there. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Cheers. Thank you very much. If you like that video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. And if you're not already a subscriber, make sure you're subscribed. We release a new video every week. And if you like free stuff, we've got a great deal for you. Click the link in the description to claim your free spot to our next live lesson.